welcome to Everything Economics. We study microeconomics, macroeconomics, and every other type of economics here. Hello everyone. So let's discuss uh, the monetary system. Uh, this is a really important chapter for the student of macroeconomics to understand. The chapter is chapter 11, the monetary system. The book is Brief Principles of Macroeconomics, fifth edition by N. Gregory Menke. This is the same book that I've been following in my previous lectures as well. It's a wonderful book. So go on and purchase that or read the PDF if you have that one. All right. So first we will discuss the meaning of money. Here we go. Money is the set of assets in the economy that people regularly use to buy goods and services from other people. You have money all around you. You use it in the form of cash and in different forms. We will study all about money in the following slides. But here it is important to understand that money includes all of the assets in the economy that consumers or people or business businessmen or government people everyone who regularly use it to buy goods and services from other people we will discuss how money has been used throughout the history from uh, barter to uh, gold after that paper money and finally now we also have uh, Bitcoin so all of these things are considered money and we will discuss how money changed form throughout the history but before we get to that point we need to understand the functions of money because you know if you want to understand what uh, when something can be used as money it gotta have these three functions so money has three functions anything which uh, had these three functions or has been uh, was considered money throughout history even if you when we are talking about uh, the party system or gold or uh, or any other form of money that has been used uh, in the past the first is medium medium of exchange an intermediate unit used to facilitate trade. The second is unit of account, a nominal monetary unit of measure used to represent the real value of an item. And the third function is store of value, an asset that retains its purchasing power into the future. Don't worry about, uh, uh, about these right now. We will discuss each function in detail in the following slides. So three functions money has. Uh, the first one is medium of exchange. Second is unit of account. Third is store of value. Anything that has these three functions can be considered money. So first, medium of exchange. Anything used as a measure of value in exchange for goods and services such as currency, checks, etc. Something such as a precious metal that is commonly used in a specific area or among a certain group of people as money. Money is used as an intermediary to avoid the inconveniences of the coincidence of bonds. For example, if one were to offer a cow as payment for a meal at McDonald's, there may be some confusion about the value of the cow. This simply means that money is generally accepted by everyone as a medium of exchange. So you give money to purchase goods and services. If you are uh, uh, an accountant who is going to a shop to purchase something, you, you do not need to provide your services, that is your accounting services, to purchase stuff from a, a superstore. What you are gonna do is, you're gonna provide your services uh, your accounting services to some other people and they will give you money and you will use that money uh, to purchase 
uh, the things that you need in a superstore. So money is generally accepted by everyone, by everyone uh, in an economy as a medium of exchange. You can also see that in this picture. So if you go to the market and purchase bread, you give money to that person. And the storekeeper, he can use that money to purchase meat. That's how it happens. Money functions as a medium of exchange or it works as an intermediary uh, between buyers and sellers. Moving on, the second function of money is unit of, unit of account. Money also functions as a unit of account, providing a common measure of the value of goods and services being exchanged. This allows different things to be compared against each other, for example, goods, services, assets, liabilities, labor, income, expenses. It lends meaning to profits, losses, liability, and assets. For example, let's talk about bread. Uh, let me bring, bring up the pen. Let's talk about bread. And uh, maybe a chair. So, how would you give value to bread, or how would you give value to a chair? If you want to purchase a chair, how many breads are equal to one chair? If there was no money, no uh, printed money in your pocket. So if you're a producer of bread and you want to purchase a chair, you would go to a chair shop. Uh, you, will, you will give your bread to that person and in return you will get chair. That's how it would be if there is no uh, money, right? But how would that function? How would that work? It would be difficult. Would you give them 10 uh, uh, bread loaves for one chair or would you give, give them 100 uh, loaves of bread for one chair? It's difficult. I mean, the the, uh, the amount of uh, the time that it will take, the inconvenience that would create. How many breads are equal to one chair? It's difficult. So what money does through this function is it provides a common measure of the value of goods and services being exchanged. So the bread costs two dollar chair costs $20. That's the value that uh, was made possible through a common measure that is money. So money provided a way to give value to this, these goods and services. This is such an important function of money. If uh, this function was not present, you can see the, the inconvenience uh, of of this uh, problem. I mean, if you go to a shoe store, how many breads would you give to purchase shoes? If you want to purchase furniture, how many breads would you give to that person for, let's say, uh, uh, the furniture? And uh, even if that person uh, accepts bread, how, uh, he would not be, uh, maybe he doesn't need like 30 or 40 breads because uh, some, some of the things might be expensive. So it creates a whole lot of problems, but what money does is that it, uh, it provides a common measure of the value of goods and services. So you're gonna set, sell 20 breads, to, uh, 10 breads to different persons, and you will get $20. And simply you can go to that uh, chair shop and purchase the chair for $20. It makes it so, in, so convenient for uh, producers and sellers to exchange goods and services. That's uh, a very important function of money. So we had the first function, medium of exchange. It allows uh, the, uh, the sellers and consumers to exchange goods and services. The second one is directly linked to that one, unit of account. That is, it provides a common measure of the values, value of goods and services being exchanged. So in that way, this also allows different things to be compared against each other like the value of different things. We can compare those to each other. Different goods, different services, different assets. We can compare their values, liabilities, labor, income, and expenses, uh, amongst other things. So 
the importance of this function is pretty much everything in our economy including its total value is measured in terms of money since everyone views money as valuable it's an efficient way for sellers to price goods and services and buyers to determine whether the value of the good is worth exchanging for money so you see it's such an important function because it allows uh, the goods to be exchanged at fair value so if a seller is uh, selling uh, let me bring up the pen if the seller is selling a bread for let's say forty dollars you will just say it's too much too expensive right so it allows buyers to determine whether the value of the good is worth exchanging the money for and at the same time it also allows sellers to set their own prices so unit of account is a very important function of money all right so let's move on to the third function of money which is again equally important third function is store of value in order to be a medium of exchange money must hold its value over time that is it must be a store of value if money could not be stored for some period of time and still remain valuable in exchange because of its function as a store of value large quantities of money are hoarded money's usefulness as a store of value declines if there are significant changes in the general level of prices so if inflation rises purchasing power declines and a cost is placed on those holding money so this function simply means that you can store money you can store your money in the banks you can store money <clears throat> uh, in your house in your safe or wherever you want to so when you save when you store money you can still use it in future although the problem is inflation so if there is inflation the price level if the price level level is increasing then the value of money will decrease but that's another point the important thing is the third function of money is store of value you can store a money to use in the future so that's also a very important function of money so money has three functions a medium of exchange unit of account and store of value so you can also see maybe uh, the direct link, link between this function and medium of exchange if you are exchanging money for goods and services the seller is accepting money because he knows that he can store the money right if he could not store the money then he would not exchange the goods and services with you so money can be stored that is also another important function because if uh, if uh, money could not be stored then the medium of exchange function would also not work but because money can be stored in the banks or in your vault or in your uh, uh, at, in your home or wherever you want to uh, or in, even in your wallets if you want to store the money there it still retains value although the, the value changes as uh, inflation or the price levels increase uh, but the important thing to understand here is that the function third function of money is also pretty important that is uh, its ability to be stored so that's it that was the first part of uh, the lecture uh, the monetary system uh, in the next part we will discuss the history of money as well so before we get to that point this was important for you to understand what is money and its functions i hope you understand uh, what the functions of money are if you uh, have any question you can just uh, put that question in the comment section and i will definitely answer all right have a good day ahead bye